Bibliophiles and welcome back to Blatantly Bookish. I'm Marissa and today I would like to talk with you guys about the book Marriage and one of Jane Austen's contemporary authors. I had the pleasure this past month of reading Marriage by Susan Edmonstone Ferrier with Claudia from the Spinsters Library and Mel from Mel's Bookland Adventures. I would be surprised if you've heard of Marriage or of Susan Edmonstone Ferrier before. Unless, of course, it was from Claudia or Mel, because they have both made videos on their experience of reading marriage, which, of course, I will link in the description down below. But before reading this book, I had never heard of it, which is strange considering that it was immensely popular in its time, and its author, Susan Ferrier, is one of Jane Austen's contemporaries, who's often toted as the Scottish Jane Austen, which I'll discuss a little more in a bit. The book was published anonymously in 1818. It enjoyed great success and was eventually republished in 1851, including Ferrier's name and her two other novels, The Inheritance and Destiny. Marriage follows the main character, Lady Juliana, as she defies her father and marries a handsome Scottish soldier for love instead of a wealthy duke for riches. The couple move to the Scottish Highlands where Juliana is miserable and we are introduced to a whole host of eccentric Scottish characters, all related to Lady Juliana's husband. Juliana eventually returns to London after having two daughters and separating from her husband. I think he just goes with his army. The second volume follows one of Lady Juliana's daughters, Mary, as she is reunited with her mother after being raised in Scotland. I went into this book not knowing the plot, and though I have just shared the vast majority of the plot with you, the plot is not why one would read this book. This book's strengths come from its brilliantly sketched characters and Ferrier's blunt, witty writing. The characters in this book are so quirky and wonderful. Even some of the names are hilarious. There's a Mr. Downright who openly declares his desire to marry. There's a Mrs. Fox who, as one of the main characters puts it, professes to be charitable amidst her display of selfish extravagance. I always find it fun when characters' names correspond to their personalities. And then there's a character who prides herself on always being right to extreme measures. She invites a group of characters to her house, and when they arrive she chastises them for coming on the wrong day, saying, How could you be such a fool, my love, as to read any such thing? Even if it had been written Tuesday, you might have had the sense to know it meant Thursday. And Ferrier's wit extends into beautiful explorations of themes of marriage, family, motherhood, and morality. She examines marriages for the sake of love, the mercenary marriage, as well as the concept of spinsterhood. I have loads of quippy quotes from this book about marriage and about morality, but I think the best ones I have that can be taken out of context are as follows. The fact is, a beefsteak is like a woman's reputation. If once it is breathed upon, it's good for nothing. And also, she ought to know by this time that a mother's partiality is no proof of a child's merit. So if these quotes have amused you, I highly recommend reading Marriage. But the question remains, if you like Austen's work, Will you like Ferrier's writing? Does Susan Edmonstone Ferrier deserve the title of the Scottish Jane Austen? My less than eloquent answer to that question is sort of, but also not really. Austen and Ferrier both wrote around the same time period. They both admired Mariah Edgeworth's writing. I really do need to read some Mariah Edgeworth. And there are some similarities to their work with regards to the theme. But the matter of fact is that the work Austen is best remembered for is more complex and well-developed in every respect than Ferrier's marriage. Austen's main six novels have more intriguing plots and more subtlety and finesse to her wit. Ferrier's writing, however, is more on par with Jane Austen's Lady Susan, which is a novella of Austen's that was never submitted for publication in her lifetime. While Lady Susan is a novella that I highly recommend, it's not Austen's most polished work. And like marriage, it deals with the role of marriage in society and features an unlikable character and terrible mother. I think that Lady Susan Vernon from Austen's Lady Susan and Lady Juliana from Ferrier's Marriage would be excellent friends. They are both selfish and unlikable characters who are a delight to read about. 
So if you're interested in hearing more about Lady Susan, I did a whole review about the novella and movie adaptation Love and Friendship. It was actually one of my first few videos on this channel, so if you go and watch it, please, please ignore all of the crazy jump cuts and just try to listen to the content. And if you like Austen's work, especially if you like Lady Susan, or if you're a fan of writing from the Regency period, I highly, highly recommend that you pick up Susan Edmonston Farrier's Marriage. Thank you guys for watching. I would love to hear if you've read this kind of obscure book, if you're interested in reading it after my little review and Claudia's review and Mel from Mel's Bookland Adventures review. And I look forward to hopefully exploring some more authors that were contemporaries of Jane Austen or wrote before Jane Austen's time. So until next time, I look forward to seeing you guys in another video soon. Bye! Thank you.